Stu Casty here, just introducing this video, which is part of a, a three part series looking at cookies and sessions, session management. Uh, in this first video, it's a bit of a prequel to the uh, three, where I'm really just setting up a database backed application that uh, stores uh, information in a database from a form. Uh, the first bit is actually about using a redirect and then we'll go on to look at setting up this application and then talking about what we want to actually achieve with cookies in this little uh, example. So I'm going to use it as an example this little application that I've written I used in a previous video which is just about uh, adding likes. So I have a very simple table here um, called likes and I have one field which is a thing that I like uh, and the application allows me to add things that I like and get the list of the likes. And my main here is fairly simple. There's a default route, a base route here that um, just uses get likes to get a list of the likes and we'll include those on the page. And then the like handler for this URL slash like adds the uh, process as a form that allows me to submit those. So if I run this application. I have it already in use. Let me just find that and kill it. So I already oh I already have it running here. So let's rerun that. Okay so here I have my little application. I can like cheese and that was added and go back and eggs was added and I'll go back. And so that's that application. The very first change I want to make is actually not about cookies, but it's about what happens when we uh, finish processing the form. So that's this handler here, the handle like. And what it's doing now is that whatever I type, it gets submitted, this slash like generates this page that says thanks, you know, is added, go back. And it's doing that through this return template thanks, which is just using this simple template which has exactly that content in it. What I would like to do, and uh, if you've seen the other video on the, uh, the way that we process forms using a redirect, uh, what I'd like to do is re return a redirect response. Okay, and the redirect method I have to import from bottle. The redirect will say, instead of showing that page, redirect the user back to the root page. So if we can see here, you can see post get, post get. That's what happened, but the, the get there was me clicking on that uh, new page. Now if I, uh, let me make this a bit smaller so we can see the log at the same time. Um, if I add something now, then you can see that imperceptibly what happened is that we got the post and then a get straight away that get was created by that redirect so I hit submit and if you sort of watch the browser slow slowly uh, carefully you can see the redirect happening so there it goes to and then uh, it goes to the uh, submits the form does a second request uh, and does a get and we can uh, view that in the browser tools Yeah. Um, I hit that. Then I have my like request, which is a post request here, and then immediately the response that is returned is a um, 303 C other the location, which is this URL, this uh, root URL. So then the browser goes and fetches that. And that's what we see. So we've got a bit of a change there in the way that we handle that. So that's that's our number one change. Um, not the subject of this video, but a very simple change. So we have now our application that can redirect uh, and handle these, these um, things. I'm going to stop that for now because I'm going to start working on this. Now what I want to do is to add the uh, new a new database template. What I want the behavior of this application to be is I wanted to ask my name as well as uh, the thing that I like. And I would like it to, to store in the database not only the thing that I like, but my name. Uh, but then I would like to use a 
sessions table and a cookie to remember my name so that each time I visit this page uh, it knows who I am. I'm not logging in yet, I'm just being remembered. Uh, so it's going to remember who my, what my name is. Uh, and then, so the first time it has to ask for my name, but subsequent times it doesn't have to ask for my name. That's the behavior that I like to have. So let's, uh, let's head towards that. The first thing that we might do is to modify this uh, form here. So it currently says, what do I like? We want to add another input here for uh, my name. And so we're going to ask for name. And the prompt here is going to be, what is your name? OK, so then I have two things that are coming through in my table. So we can see that if we run. And we should be able to get this. What is your name or what do you like? Uh, so at the moment I'm not going to handle that. Right. So then I want to I will want to handle that in in here. Okay. Uh, and what I in, sorry I'm going to handle that in this form uh, thing. So what I will do is I will say name equals request dot forms dot get name. And so that's going to be the name of the person. And now, instead of just adding a thing that somebody likes, I want to add some uh, a name there as well. So I'm going to have to go in now to here and say there's a name in here. I'm going to have to change my database table to add a name, which is text as well as the thing. Uh, and I'm going to say I've got to add the name and the thing to the database. And that's two fields I will add and then here I've got the name and the thing. Now I'm adding the name and the thing to the database and so I've got now a database table that's a little bit more complicated, uh, a name and a thing and every time I uh, deal with that I can add uh, all both of those things. I need to rerun my database module to create this new database table. Um, and we should now be able to run our main application again. And so my name is Steve and I like cheese. Okay, that's added. But now it's asking me for my name again. Um, and I like eggs. So I can go through, but what I want to enable now is that instead of asking for my name every time, it saves my name in a cookie.